Hi, my name is Phoebe, and today we're going to go through fabric types, and we're going to focus on the 3D window fabric types. So this is actually going to be broken up into three different videos, and this is going to be the first one of three, and focusing on 3D window fabric types. So let's jump on in and have some fun while we learn. Okay, so here we have our 3D window. Now, in our 3D window, we have our fabric types and we can start to play around with them a bit. Before we do though, I'm going to turn on my quality render. So my quality render lighting is going to adjust the lighting to be a little bit better. And so you can see differences a little bit more. Now, you can actually play around with this lighting a little bit. So if I go into my environment display and I go to show 3D light, I'll then see this little icon that I can click on. And over here in my property editor, I can play around with the intensity and the angle. I'm going to stick with the default, which will be 0 and 1. So you can play around with this a little bit if you want to and see what you what's best for you. So now let's all get into fabric types, which is the important thing. Before we get into fabric types, there's just one other thing I want to bring up really quickly. So if I go into my object browser, which I moved down below, I can select my fabric. And then over here in your property editor, which is the top for me, you'll see type. Right, so you'll see your type right here. And right now it's fabric mat. And that is great for most fabric types, like gabardine, twill, um, any fabrics that you know aren't super, aren't really any shine to it. And they're good with mats. Now, if I use this drop down and change it around, you'll see that nothing's changed, partly because I don't have simulation on. If I turn on simulation though, it will still all stay the same. What does this mean, you may ask? Well, what it means is this very important thing. Your fabric type does not influence your drape of your fabric, okay? If you want to influence the drape of the fabric and adjust it in any way, that is all done through physical property, okay? Physical property is the only way in which you can in which your fabric's going to change in draping. There's other ways that your fabric can change in draping, but for this right here, this is how you will change your fabric for the drape through physical properties, not through fabric type, okay? Not at all, only through physical properties. It's important, which is why I've said it a few times now and in the very beginning of this video, okay? so. Don't forget, if you want to change the drape, it's not through fabric type, okay? Not at all. So now let's go into fabric type. Now, fabric type for your 3D window, the thing that's going to change the most when you change and move these around is your reflection. And you can kind of see this as I switch through different types, okay? So metal, my reflections changed a bit. Um, shiny, my reflection is changing a bit, matte, my reflection changes. So you'll see that the reflection for your 3D window fabric types, that is the thing that changes. Now, you may start asking yourself, or maybe me right now, um, what is reflection? And specifically, what is this roughness and reflection intensity? Great question, let me tell you. Reflection intensity increases the amount of light that's gonna bounce off of your material. So in other words, it acts like a white filter for the base color. So a material that has high intensity reflects more light. So it's going to look a little bit more white and blurry. I'm gonna show you in a picture right now. So this is roughness. This is reflection intensity. So here we've got a reflection intensity of zero, and we're gonna move all the way over to 100. And you can see how the higher you go, the more you see at the white like um, edges of this fabric, 
and a little bit blurrier it gets. That is reflection intensity. Now, let's talk about roughness. It's your next option over here, right? Roughness is a little bit different. So what roughness does is it decides how much that intensity is going to spread throughout the fabric. So a really low number means that there is going to be smaller areas that it's going to reflect, okay? While as a larger number is going to reflect a larger part of the fabric. Does that kind of make sense? Makes sense when you play around here. So at 100, it's a little bit more matted while at zero, it's shinier. Here is a picture I'm gonna show you. So this is roughness type at 100. While as if I go all the way over here, this is it at zero. So you can see at zero, it's like they're, the lights kind of every, in a lot of really tiny places. So you see it more like bouncing out at you. <laughs> While at 100, it's kind of spreading across the whole um, fabric, like nice and evenly kind of. That, my friends, is roughness. So now that we understand what's being changed, let's go through all of the different types. So with this first fabric here, the cotton satin, let's select our fabric and go through our first one. Our first one is fabric mat. Now this again is great for cotton twills, garberdine, um, satin, uh, many knits. It's gonna be great for all of those. If I go down to shiny, and you'll see that this has changed a bit. So here, if I zoom in a little bit and I rotate in and all of that, you can see that now there's like a little bit of a shine to it. This is great for fabrics that um, have, have a little bit of a shine to them. I mainly use this for actually hardware. So whenever I have a button that's like a shell button or something, I'll use this because all of these types are not just applied to all of our fabrics and clothes, but also all of our hardware and clothes as well. So you can adjust our hardware types to being like shiny or metal or anything like that. The next one we have is a silk satin. So that's a lot shinier and everything, and this is playing around with it a lot. What's also happening here is with the silk satin, What's going to happen is Clo automatically mixes in a white to the base color to create a higher shine effect, which is why you can see like this shine so much more versus just shiny to silk satin. Cool, right? Okay, let's move on to our next fabric. So our next fabric is the velvet. We all love velvet, it's fun. Um, some people want to drape themselves in velvet, I hear. Anyway, <laughs> that's a TV show joke, like in case anybody knows. Um, so what happens with our velvet? Let's go into this. So here we're gonna go to our velvet here, and here we have fabric velvet. So for this, we do have our reflection changes, but if I go to my basic parameters drop down, this right here, and I click drop down, you're actually also going to see that there's been a bit of change over here as well. So let me change this to a matte. Do you see how for my matte fabric, I didn't have this extra option for color? See, there's no drop down for matte for color. With velvet, there is. So with velvet, you have two options with your colors. You have front color and side color. And it's um, front color multiplier versus side color multiplier. Okay, so for velvets, they have a very distinct kind of reflection to them where the sides of it are reflect more than the front color. So that's what this is going to play around with. If you want this to look realistic, then I would make sure that your front color stays between 0.1 and 1 while your side color stays between 10 and 30. 
If I'm changing my side color to, let's say, five and my front color to two, you see that this no longer really looks like a velvet. But if I keep this down to 0.5 and maybe my side color is 30, um, 20, sorry, the top, the higher screen goes 20, um, then you can start to see, wow, this looks like a lot more realistic. Maybe I can drop this down to 15 and this will look a little better. Looking really great. You'll also see that your reflection does change. It's mainly your roughness that's going to be increased while the reflection intensity is going to be all about this color that you play around with. Okay, the next one we're going to go to is our leather lambskin. So let's go into that. Now our leather for here, when we select this, you also again see that your reflection is played around with a bit and it's changed. The thing that's going to help the most with leather though is actually your normal map intensity. The lower the normal map intensity, the less realistic it looks. The higher you go, the better it is for leather. You can also continue to play around with your roughness if you'd like, or with anything like this, but it's your normal map intensity that's going to make your leather look more or less realistic. Okay, now let's go into our metallic. So here we have our metal fabric type. Now for our metal fabric type, you see, now what's added is one, like we've adjusted our roughness and reflection, but we've also adjusted this metalness option. So you can play around with this little toggle and increase or lower your metalness, and this will affect how much um, a of a reflection this like metalness has on it. But another really important thing to know is that this is what metalness looks like without any color. If you add in color though, it will then be adjusted like so. It is important though to know that sometimes the color is going to look a little bit different when you have metalness applied. So I use this type whenever I have foil prints or stuff like that. It's really helpful for all of those things, especially for graphics, or if I have a zipper that I know is a metal zipper or a metal button or anything like that. And finally, we have, I'm gonna go down to here, we have our plastic. Plastic is really great, again, for hardwares. So if you have a plastic button, plastic zipper, this is gonna be great. For fabrics, if you want to get a look of a vinyl, this is when plastic's really helpful. You can play around with the opacity and you can try to get more of a vinyl look. Again, if you go into your color, this will then be adjusted and all of that. And you can keep playing around with your roughness or reflection intensity to get whatever you like for your plastic. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video all about fabric types in your 3D window. If you have any questions, please post them down below in the comment section. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. We have so many great videos and so much great content on our Clo channel that it's just going to keep helping you. Uh, thanks so much for watching again and see you soon.